with the curse of the Bakru. Welcome to another scary episode of Our Ghost Reel, where we embark on a journey deep into the heart of the Amazon jungle in Suriname to unravel the haunting tale of the Bakru. Brace yourselves for a reckless educational and scary ride you will never forget. Suriname, a mythical and remote country covered by the Amazon rainforest, lying on the Guyana Shields in South America. It's a true melting pot of different populations and their cultures and religions, steeped in ancient beliefs and supernatural tales. The Indians, Creoles, Maroons, Hindustanis, Javanese, Chinese, Lebanese, Jews and Dutch settlers, each brought their own customs and stories to the country. Among the numerous ghosts and spirits that populate the rich Surinamese and Guyanese folklore, the Bakru, or Baku, stands out. It is restless soul trapped in a small body, with big eyes and a large head forever bound to the earthly realm. Its depictions may vary, depending on those that come into contact with this shape-shifting spirit. Some say his head is part wood and part flesh, with a short neck and sharp teeth sticking out of his large mouth. Some describe it as a monstrosity, where its head encompasses half of the body. Where the total length of the body is three feet, with long arms and legs, with the striking feature that they lack kneecaps. The word Bakru is believed to be derived from the word Abiku, from the Yoruba in Nigeria. The Abiku is the spirit of deceased babies who had not yet been given a name. Wooden figures are made in memory of the deceased babies to keep the minds calm. Tales spread exclusively through oral transmission, through transatlantic slavery and migration from West African folklore. Those enslaved who made it to the New World would only have their memories, traditions, and stories left to share. In Suriname, no one doubts the existence of good or evil power. In its capital city, Paramaribo, where the Dutch influence was strong in the past, many things are hidden, as the official Dutch Christian side has always resisted the beliefs against superstition, especially tales of the Bakru. There are many ghost stories circling around in which it appears, especially around the cemeteries that are right there in the middle of the city. There's a common distinction between the wild Bakru and the working Bakru. The wild Bakru would plague the neighborhood in abandoned houses, on street corners, under bridges or in small ditches and creeks. The working Bakru would be under the influence of market vendors or successful entrepreneurs who act as their bosses. That influence would have a beneficial effect on the success of the bosses because Bakrus utilize an invisible attraction on customers. However, this success would only continue as long as the market vendor takes good care of the Bakru. Once it goes hungry or ambitious, the spook goes in search of another boss, leaving the previous boss bewitched or even dead. The Bakru, which is never afraid, continues his torment from boss to boss, never being alone since it has the gift of black magic. Let's share a famous story of a working Bakru and how it helped and then plagued its boss. A sense of determination fills the air as boss Panza sets out to pursue his luck in agriculture. On the way to his land, he crosses an important bridge just outside of the city center. All of a sudden, a sinister voice of a Bakru speaks to him, demanding to know who approaches his bridge. Boss recalls the warnings given by his friend Maxi about the supernatural beings dwelling near the bridge. A recent encounter resurfaces in his mind. Maxi had instructed him never to utter the name of the Bakru. He had described the dark legend of a mysterious bridge where these creatures lurk for prey. Maxi's mischievous laughter still echoes as he described the scary spook as a large water-headed goblin-like entity. The chilling image of the Bakru's self-defense mechanism lingers in the farmer his mind. The creature rotates its body, positioning the wooden side to face sharp objects, never feeling pain as the wooden part bears the impact of any blow. Fearless and never alone, the ghost and its family serve as workers for humankind, with the working Bakru as their toiling spirit. But those who have nothing to offer for them do face a grim fate, for they fall victim to this spirit. To get rid of their presence, one must present them with an impossible task or successfully guess their mysterious names. Boss recalls his friend's failed many attempts to exorcise a Bakru from his wife Misi Sarah. He remembers his friend addressing the spirit as Papa, Mama, and even Brother, which never received an audible response. Finally, after weeks of trying, the ghost answered to be a deceased relative of the victim, and it announced his wife would come back to sanity, if he could guess its name. Despite Maxie's efforts, he could not guess its true name, and thus, 
the creature remained within Misi Sarah's tormented body. Undeterred by the ominous tales, Boss Panza asks the Bakru to reveal itself, daring to confront the supernatural being. As he discloses his intentions for simply planning to visit his land, the spirit's voice resonates with authority, questioning the farmer's desires. He explains his search for land to pursue and his agricultural aspirations, unaware of the Bakru's hidden agenda. Suddenly, an army of 100 men materializes around Boss Panza, forcefully dragging him towards a pristine piece of land. Boss Panza acquires the land at a surprisingly modest price, preparing himself for the tasks that lie ahead. The following day, Boss Panza returns to the bridge, ready to embark on his endeavor of cleaning the land. The Bakru's voice emerges once more, inquiring about his plans. Boss confidently reveals his intentions, prompting the Bakru to summon the hundred men to help him finishing his task. With their collective efforts, the land swiftly transforms into a pristine young fertile farmland, leaving the farmer astounded and grateful for their perplexing assistance. Keeping the remarkable secret hidden from his wife, Boss Panza witnesses the astonishment on her face when he announces his plans to plant bananas, and in no time to be able to set up his plantation. The Bakrus commanded the hundred men to promptly assist the farmer in achieving his goal in planting banana trees in an efficient way, ensuring confusion at the boss his wife upon his swift return that day, telling her about his achievements. As harvest time arrives, his wife mocks his success, teasing him about his money trees. He remains silent, holding his secret close to himself. With determination, he heads to the bridge, declaring his intention to harvest the first batch of bananas. Within minutes, an astonishing sight unfolds before him. A thousand bunches of bananas appear, turning the plantation owner instantly into a prosperous wholesaler. Despite distributing a few bunches to his wife and family members, Boss Panza is left with an overwhelming surplus to sell at the market. His wife's bewilderment deepens, unable to understand how he obtained such abundance in such a short time. Days pass, and the boss, his desire for leisure, draws him into a local fishing store, leaving his wife to think about the origin of their newfound wealth. Curiosity leads her to the plantation, where she hears a chilling voice coming from the bridge, without the spirit making itself known. Stunned and trembling of the incident, she identifies herself as the boss, his wife, seeking assistance in gathering bananas. Unaware of the consequences, and in a blink of an eye, she receives a hundred bunches of bananas, which she then decides to sell at the market. The truth tumbles from her lips as she reveals her knowledge of what happened and her suspicion of the working Bakru's existence to her husband. Panic develops as he warns her against speaking such forbidden words out loud. Yet her curiosity remains adamant, prompting the boss and his wife to return to the bridge the very next day. Confronting the spirit, Boss Pansa boldly and not entirely thinking about consequences announces his intention to punish his wife, hoping to teach her a lesson. Immediately, the ghost commands a hundred men coming from nowhere to assist him with the punishment. Filled with fear, the woman tries to flee, but her desperate attempt to escape was unsuccessful. She had no chance against the pursuing horde. When the fastest man in the horde catches up to her, he ruthlessly subjects her to a merciless beating before she would able to seek refuge. Devastated by this, Boss Panza later that day cannot fall asleep, consumed by thoughts of what happened to his wife and how to break free from the spirit's grasp. An old conversation with Maxi ignites hope, inspiring him to a daring plan to challenge the Bakru. Boss Pansa stands at the bridge, his resolve unyielding. With a determined glare, he challenges the Bakru. This time he demands an impossible task, to untangle a single fiber of his curly hair. Immediately, a hundred men gather around Boss Pansa, their hands meticulously working through his curls. Hours and hours pass and sweat drips down from their faces and bodies as they struggle to accomplish the request. The curls always seem to persist, springing back to original curl with an unyielding resistance. The boss, undeterred, realizes that his plan went as expected, and now the time has come to break free from the Bakru's grip. As he approaches, a gust of wind stirs the air, and the bridge trembles under his feet. The Bakru, Sensing the plantation owner, his determination emerges from the shadows, its ghastly figure casting an eerie presence. The air crackles with tension as the two lock eyes. Boss Panza confronts the entity in a powerful exchange of words and challenges the Bakru's hold over him. He unveils his newfound strength and resilience, 
fueled by his love for his wife and his burning desire to reclaim his life. The Bakru, surprised the Bai boss his determination, realizes that it can no longer hold power over him, as he was not able to finish the request to untangle the plantation owner's hair, even with a hundred men. With a defeated groan, it concedes, retreating into the darkness from whence it came. The man, triumphant but exhausted, embraces his wife, their love rekindled amidst the turmoil. Together, they rebuild their lives, free from the haunting presence of the Bakru, but with a wealthy banana plantation and hard honest labor. Their story becomes a symbol of resilience, reminding others that, even in the face of supernatural hardship, the human spirit can overcome the curse of the Bakru. The legend of the Bakru still lives on, etched into the folklore of the community. It serves as a cautionary tale and a testament to the indomitable human spirit. And here we conclude our exploration of the Bakru, who may be mischievous, but his diverse tales carry profound truths, reminding us that sometimes the greatest victories are achieved with wit, wisdom, flexibility, and magic. This spirit continues to both frighten and intrigue the Surinamese people until this day. Its tales remind us of the thin veil that separates the realms of the living and the dead. Thanks for your attention, stay eager and curious, and until next time with another spine-tingling tale on Our Ghosts Reel, where we unravel more frightening mysteries from the realms of the supernatural.